We need to talk about Israeli propaganda. Because frankly, there's a lot of it. And we need to, uh, I, I need to prepare you guys because we're going to, we're going to be seeing a lot more propaganda from the IDF, from the Israeli State Department, etc. All right. So we need to be able to prep ourselves for this. And we're going to start with uh, kind of a simple one that uh, I saw making a bit of traction on social media here. Good night, LB. Israeli's LGBTQ community is playing a broad role on all fronts in war against Hamas, fighting in Gaza, helping the displaced, promoting advocacy. Yeah, I'm sure the IDF is really doing a lot of helping uh, the displaced. I'm going to sneeze now. <laughs> uh, all right. Awesome. Lovely. But, uh, you know, uh, we, we gotta, we gotta have, you know, the image of an Israeli holding a Star of David flag with rainbows across it in front of a goddamn tank that's being used to blow up civilian targets in, in Gaza, you know, uh, th this is literally the embodiment of, we need more gay drone pilots, you know, like it's the. We need more women, <laughs> women <laughs> bomb droppers. You know, like it's it's honestly uh, just kind of impressive. Uh, it's an oldie but a goodie, really. Yeah, like one person here. Oh, Shaloon. Triple digit likes. Plus you guys did it. Streamer dono. Three. Thank you, Jack, for being such a beacon in this space. Shaloon. Night. Hanging out here helped. You all are cool, BWA. First of all, thank you all for getting me to over 100 likes on the stream. That is a big bar. And second of all, Shaloon, I'm honored that it's your first ever streamer, Dono. And I'm glad that hanging out here has helped, even as we talk about horrific war crimes. Um, appreciate you. Thank you so much. But uh, one of the things we need to note about this is uh, this this Twitter user responds propaganda very clearly and obviously, you know, correctly identifying a piece of Israeli propaganda. And Social Impact Israel responds human rights groups such as Amnesty are clear that LGBTQ persons living in Gaza under the Hamas regime are subject to oppression, persecution, and even death. So why are you against freeing the Palestinians from Hamas? And really, the, the answer to that question is, isn't the IDF killing way more LGBTQ people right now than Hamas ever has? I mean, just statistically, that's true, right? Like, just statistically, by sheer number of Palestinians, the IDF is killing right now. They're killing a lot more LGBTQ people than Hamas has. Yeah, it, you know, the oppression of Hamas greater than the oppression of indiscriminate bombing and white phosphorus drops? Hmm, I don't know. I don't know here. Who can say? But I'm here to tell you that we're going to be seeing a lot more sophisticated propaganda. And it's also very likely that Israel is going to be reaching out to celebrities that some maybe that you know and like to get them to do bits of Israeli propaganda, you know? And it might not even be obvious Israeli propaganda, like the post we just looked at, right? Um, because what we've been seeing is that the Israeli State Department is piece by piece, releasing bits and bobs of footage from October 7th, the October 7th attacks, right? And those pieces of footage are horrific and are going to be used to try and convince different celebrities to speak out uh, in favor of Israel and against Hamas, okay? 
And the implication is going to be, like, the PR strategy here is to just paint Hamas as unspeakably evil and bad, and Israel as uh, very righteous in its anger and uh, quest for vengeance uh, and security, right? And that's going to be kind of like the main thrust of this propaganda campaign. Because, frankly, Israel knows that it's losing the PR war right now. And really the only thing they have to fall back on is, well, look at all of this horrific uh, footage we have from the October 7th attacks. And putting that forward as if that justifies the further atrocities, as if one atrocity uh, validates uh, a retaliatory atrocity. Uh, which, of course, is not how that works, actually. Um, and, yeah, like, you've had the ad blitz already, but you're going to start seeing more sophisticated forms of kind of Israeli propaganda. It's not just going to be, like, a hastily thrown-together little animated thing. It's going to be, like, I'm, I'm just pulling a name out of my ass, okay? It's going to be, like, Dave Chappelle getting up on stage and like telling jokes about how awful Hamas is, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be like, uh, I don't know, uh, Tony Stark showing up in an interview. I forgot, I forgot the actor's name, but Tony Stark showing up in an interview and talking about how horrific all of the footage he's seen of October 7th was and how he just can't get it out of his head, you know? Because right before that interview, he was contacted by, like, the Israeli State Department. And, like, they're like, hey, watch this and go do your interview. Robert Downey Jr., thank you. It's going to get more sophisticated from here. And, uh... <laughs> yeah. This is, uh... I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna keep this here. Uh, Gal Gadot, uh, like a week or two ago, uh, tweeted out no hash, no hostage left behind. And, uh, by your logic over here, uh, responding, I hate the backseat quarterback, but I think this campaign may have been more successful if you did it before the Israeli government told the hostages families to fuck off, killed a few dozen hostages with airstrikes and then hired actors to pretend to be their approving families. Uh, and, uh, here's... You know, Gal Gadot engaging in you know, the Israeli propaganda machine. Right? So, like, the implication here every moment counts over a picture of the hostage, right? And the implication there being, well, we have to, we have to use excessive force to uh, defeat Hamas as quickly as possible because that will allow us to recover the hostages. That's the implication, right? The implication here is that, well, you know, uh, if Israel is freed to use both its hands to do war crimes, we'll be able to get our hostages back twice as fast. Then why the fuck are they not negotiating? Uh, because the Israeli state doesn't really care about retrieving the hostages alive. It mainly cares about pursuing its campaign of ethnic cleansing. The hostages are just a pretext. So she's bought and sold by Israel. Gal Gadot is a proud, like, like really proud of her uh, uh, past service in the IDF. Gal, Gal Gadot is, like, is or was a member of the IDF and, like, is really proud of it. She's Israeli and it, service is mandatory. So, like, it's not surprising that Gal Gadot is, is very pro uh, the IDF's official PR line, you know? Haven't the bombardments killed around 50 hostages so far? Yep. The indiscriminate bombing of uh, Gaza has indeed killed a number of hostages. 
Gal Gadot is already planning to screen a documentary about October 7th, courtesy of the IDF. Wait, seriously? Wait, I didn't, I didn't see that. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Dude. She's got a documentary in the pipeline. It's been like a month and they already have a documentary putting out. I, I'm going to, I'm not going to lie. I didn't expect that one. I didn't expect them to be able to do a documentary film in like a month. That's wild. There's an ad meant for kids' channels. Yeah, we covered that early on. It's pretty disgusting. Like, I can only say bruh so much, but bruh. Right? Right? Now, I do have something to share with you, which is, uh, honestly, I... The, the fact that this exists, right? That not only does this exist... But this was tweeted out by the official Israel Twitter account, okay? This is real. This is, this is real. Look at this. The, the official, official State of Israel Twitter account, okay? Here, what, what, what could the State of Israel be tweeting out? YouTube with Columbia Antisemity News, where everyone is welcome. LGBTQH. H. Hamas. <laughs> yeah, I totally sim Hamas. Yeah. It's so trending right now. From the, the river, river to, to the sea, Palestine, Palestine will, will be free. free. Do you know why it's true? Mm. Because it rhymes. <laughs> Just look at all this toxic Zionist propaganda. Kidnapped in Gaza? Does this look like Gaza to you? Yeah, bro, I have no idea what Gaza looks like. And they're smiling. Do hostages smile? Sign us liars. Totally sus. Do they think we're stupid? Stupid? I major in queer post-colonial astrology. Ew. Jews make the world dirty. Yeah. And no, I'm not anti-Semitic. I'm racist fluid. Exactly. And now for a little break from all this activism, we want to say hello to our BFF. Bestie freedom fighter. Abu Fatwa in Gaza. Salam alaikum. Alaikum assalam. And inshallah, Allah will kill you all infidels. Thank you so much for joining us. Love the headpiece, the all oppression chic. Very drip. Mr. Fatwa, how are you? Are you safe? Oh, yes, I'm safe. I'm in a tunnel under the Gaza hospital. Oh. Above me, I have Allah and two million civilians protecting me. Community is so important these days. Do you need, like, humanitarian aid, food, fuel, medicine? It's okay. I have everything. I'm only hungry for rockets. Mm. As long as it's organic. Yeah. I wish I could be there with you. You can. You can come. How much money to make this stop? Uh, I mean, it's like another minute long, I think. Yes. But I will accept any dono. I just, we're going to watch the entire thing. Um, I am still trying to get over the part where he says we have, you know, a hospital and two million Palestinians to protect us. And this is being tweeted out by Israel, who's literal position on this is yes we should kill all civilians to get to the terrorists underneath the hospital like literally the israeli position is to drop bombs on the hospital to kill hamas even if you need to kill the civilians 
Like, and Israel's just tweeting this out, dude. To Gaza anytime, and we will throw you from the roof, you homosexual dirt. Do you hear? Bro, want to throw me a rooftop party? They are so welcoming and inclusive. So shukran. And you are also very welcome to come here. By the way, I, I love that the underlying uh, position here is that, oh, well, Hamas doesn't like LGBTQ people, so we, we should kill all of them? That, I, like, I'm sorry, what? I <laughs> here to America. We will come. First we finish with Israel. And America is next. Great! So I guess we'll see you soon. Yes, it would be a blast. <laughs> Can't wait. It'll be so multicultural. <gasps> yeah, Allah, you are so stupid. Thank you so much, Abu. We love you. I won't even bother killing you. It's a waste of bullets. Good vibes only. Ah, <sighs> it's better you just kill yourself. <laughs> okay, bye. Die. From, From the, the river, river to, to the, the sea, sea, Palestine will be just free. free. Yeah, that sounds better. It is better. That, I need to remind all of you, is an official statement from the at Israel Twitter account. It is the official... <laughs> State Twitter account managed by the Israel MFA team, the Foreign Ministry of Israel. This is... This is from the Israeli equivalent of SNL called Eretz uh, Nehederet. Aren't they literally making fun of queer people in the skit? Yeah, not only are they trying to say, well, it's okay that we're killing Hamas because, uh, you know... Um, we're, it's okay we're killing Palestinians and Hamas because they all hate queer people but like that also that skit also makes it clear that you hate queer people right like it, there's so much going on in that there's so much going on I'm gonna need to go to therapy now yet yeah, I mean Jesus this must be what having a stroke feels like. Yeah, when you die, you just encounter those two idiots. You, you, encounter, you encounter the comedy stylings of the official at Israel account. And workers of the world unite, except for those two actors. Yeah, no kidding. It's just, uh, like, all of this, right? is contrasted by the sincerity and humanity of the people who are trying to be like, hey, maybe don't do a genocide. Maybe, maybe. Just because, like, one small, one group, like, wronged you, you shouldn't kill everyone in that group. You know, like... Yeah, pretty basic, like, humanitarian logic here. But, um, no, uh, a lot of Israelis can't follow it, you know? Now, uh, I do want to say, um, I, I want to, I want to contrast it with this clip, okay? Now, I'm going to preface this by saying, um, this man is named, uh, Maus Inon, and, uh, both of his parents were murdered uh, on October 7th by Hamas, okay? And uh, he has been protesting in a tent outside the Israeli parliament calling for Netanyahu to resign and end the war. And he's just kind of been living there. And here's just a brief interview with him. This is the, to contrast with the awful, inhuman genocidal uh rhetoric we we just saw we have this man who is suffering immeasurable loss can to ask netanyahu to go or do you have to wait for the end of the war or 
because your, your because of your question yes. and your leaders and world leaders that are waiting for the world to stop before uh, they will stop supporting Israeli government, the war would never end. The war would never end as long as Netanyahu is in his office. So I'm crying to the world, don't support Netanyahu. Don't send us weapons. Don't se send us ships of war. Send us peace. Mm. Send us love. Send us reconciliation. I have another question. You say that all of the things can to ask me. This man, this man, his family was murdered by Hamas. He has every reason to support a, a campaign of vindictive vengeance against Hamas. And yet he is dedicating his time, you know, of grief to calling for an end to the conflict and uh, the, the, uh, frankly, the accountability for Netanyahu's uh, unconscionable crimes. And just to like, I, I mean, M NPR did a, a good job here um, with this. <clears throat> the Israeli Hamas war has not quashed their compassion, their empathy, their hope. And uh, Mao Zanon is uh, featured in this article, so we're going to go over it real quick. Mao Zanon no longer sleeps well at night. His loss is too great. So first thing every morning for 45 minutes, he swims in the Mediterranean off the Israeli shore to find a few moments of peace. Great sea life. Fish, manta rays, says Zanon. It's really surprising. Beautiful swimming. Just to know that I'm doing something for my body and for my soul. But once Anon is back ashore, the events of October 7th come tumbling back into his mind. The morning of the Hamas attack, Anon's parents were at home in their community of Netiv Ha-Asara, a quarter mile from Gaza. I called, and my dad said he and Mom are in the safe room, and there are lots of sirens and alarms and shooting, Anon recalls. When he saw the news about what was happening, he called his father back about five minutes later. This time there was no answer, he says. This was the last time we heard from them. Inan's father was 78 and an expert agronomist. His mother would have turned 76 this week. She was a retired school teacher and an artist. That morning, Inan says a Hamas fighter launched a rocket-propelled grenade that directly hit his parents' wooden house. The security guy of the community told us that my parents' house is burned to ashes and there are two bodies inside, he says. Some of Inan's family in Israel gathered in person. They called his brother in London and their children. With the group together, we told them, he says, his voice quivering. For much of the time since then, Anon says it has felt like he's swimming in an ocean of sorrow. When you are swimming in the ocean, he explains, you don't understand how big it is. You don't see the end. You don't see the bottom. So that's how big it is, more than you can understand. And yet, amid the sea of grief he is cratered into, Anon says he feels no urge for revenge. And when he cries, somehow the tears aren't for his parents. I was crying, and I'm still crying, for all the innocent victims from both sides that will die, he says. And I'm crying for this 100 years of bloodshed, of cycle of death. Inan says this cycle can seem endless, but he has hope. It seems like there's no solution, but there is. Not everyone who has suffered a, hor a horrific loss responds like Inan. Just... You know, I, I, I just I don't know exactly what to say about this one. You know? As much as you suffer, it hurts to know how many others will suffer too and are suffering too. That's a big part of grief. Yeah, there's a certain there's a certain camaraderie, you know? 
between his his loss and maybe it is through his loss that he's able to imagine the depth of grief and loss for Palestinians within Gaza, you know? Maybe this is part of what builds the bridge, a, a bridge of grief between two, two groups of people. <laughs>